This conference will now be recorded. All right, it's 6.30 and I'll call this town council meeting to order. Uh, Bill Shanahan, our town administrator, will do the invocation for us. I listened to the words that the people said about this lady who she was in her 80s and they talked about honesty, they talked about her actions, they talked about her selfless sacrifice. And that would be my prayer this day for the people in this place, Lord God, that they live that life. We don't just talk, that we walk the walk, Lord God. That when they hear our voices, they hear honesty. When they see our actions, they see sacrifice. And when we come together, there's nothing that we can do. We cannot do if we do that together. And I say this to your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, there is no public hearing tonight, and uh, the next thing I'll take any motions relating to the agenda. Are there any motions relating to the agenda? Okay. Moving right along, the next is the minutes approvals, and this is the minutes approval for October 11th, 2022. Mr. Yes. Make a motion that we approve the minutes from October the 11th to 22 regular meeting. I'll second. Okay, I have a second. Is there any discussion before we vote on that? Mr. Staming? Yes. Holder? Yes. Keating? Yes. Cracklaw? Yes. Kinkin? Yes. Drake? Yes. And myself is yes. So the minutes passed unanimously. The next thing is public comments, and these are public comments for agenda items only, and each speaker is limited to five minutes. Okay, if there's no public comments, the next thing is communications. And under communications, the first thing is the financial report from Director King. Good evening. Mayor, Council, members of the public. This will be the financial report for the month of September. The general fund revenue is 903,000. Year-to-date expenditures, unfortunately, are 1.847 million. That leaves us in the hole for $910,000 for the first three months of the year. However, in October, the t as you probably all received, your property tax bills went in the mail, and they will be start to come into us starting next month. Biggest month of collection, really, is December and January. In August, we had 30, 22 new business license accounts. Six were new businesses. There were no new rentals this month. Eight new contractors and eight out-of-town businesses. Special revenue funds, which are accommodations, hospitality, and local ATACs. The accommodations funds will be received from the state. Um, actually, they came in yesterday. The hospitality collections totaled 970000 and 245000 year-to-date. These are more than last year. Capital projects had no expenditures. Stormwater utility fund engineering work continues on the second page of the drainage project. The pier fund is attached in the next page. Sanitation revenue from sanitation fees was 470,000 while expenditures were 378. They are doing extremely well as usual. Parking um, revenue ends this month at the end of October and so far yielding year to date, we've gotten $140,000. The audit is finished, as you, Emily, came to see you at the last meeting. Um, we're currently sending in all the reports that are due to all the state agencies so we can get all of our awarded money and other items and not to be late. Um, if you turn to page two on the pier, which I guess would be the big news, <clears throat> you notice up at the top that we've paid um, consensus so far $11,746,140. Going down that first column from what we paid pre-construction was 989 million consensus 11 million 4, 748. 
retainage, which has not been paid yet, but will be for 375. The inspections are 124,000. Brainstorm, we paid them 30,000 to put in the water taps. Collins, we've paid 305,000. Haggerty, 9,000. Legal, 9,000. Interest, 107. The restaurant, we've put $1,350 in so far. And the insurance was 315,000. So we paid out to date 14 million. 016893. Our FEMA grant, we are just there due $197,000 is due to us. Um, the funds available, if you look, we got the $9 million from FEMA, $5 million from the other funds, $4 million from the bond, five hundred from the PRT grant, plus another million from the next PRT grant. So we should be getting in $20,546,000. If you get down to the total projected costs, um, down just about in the middle, we pay, we estimate that we'll pay consensus 16,035,608, and that's through um, change order number eight. And as you may have seen in the email today, we got change order number nine for 783,000. So that would make the total 16,819,584. Um, coming down to the very bottom, that would change that bottom number from 19,264 to 20,048 based on what we know today, and there are still some other things in the pipeline for change orders. Um, I don't know the status of what will happen to those, but they're out there to come, I guess. Okay, if we go to the individual funds, um, general fund, as I mentioned, is not is running in the red at the moment, but property taxes will start to come in next month. Um, <clears throat> I wrote my little numbers, but I'm not sure what they mean. Um, number one, it just means that the taxes have been sent out because so far we've only taken in $55,000 so far this year. Licenses and permits are ahead by $52,000, both of which are doing extremely well. Police fines are ahead by $32,000 from last year. Interest is up seven. It's really amazing to see how much interest has gone up in the past month. Parking is up 23 from last year, and the transfers are up $115,000 from last year. If we move on to... Um, the expenses, all the departments, the goal is to be have only spent 25% of your money and have 75 left. If you go all the way over to the right column at the end of every department, there's only a couple that are um, have spent more than 25 so far, but that's usually due to timing. It's something that you need to do at the beginning of the year rather than at the end of the year, so it can't be spread out. So we go all the way down to expenses, we are right on target. We have 75% left on page 7 of 7 in the general fund. But as I mentioned, we have $971,000 in the hole at the moment. <clears throat> Sanitation has a net of $92,000 for the year to date. Revenue is up by seven. Expenditures are down by nine <clears throat> um, from last year. The pier, we have a net revenue of $323,000. Oh, that's because of the transfers. I couldn't remember why that was. Okay, never mind. Stumped myself for a minute. Okay, accommodations tax. Um, we are underwater at the moment by 214, but we did get our, our check-in for July, August, and September today, and it's around $490,000. We will have to pay the um, Murder Beach Chamber out of that, but the rest of it will be ours and general funds. Hospitality, we're um, $562,000 to the good at the moment. Collections are exceeding last year by $130,000. We will need a budget amendment, as I mentioned before, for the restrooms at Old Children's Park and for some engineering that we've been doing because they're not in the budget. Local accommodations were ahead by $36,000 from last year. Um, and in the stormwater fund, the money will start coming in, like I said, with tax bills in October, so right now it doesn't have um, net revenue, has net expense. And the capital projects fund, we have put the money in for beach renourishment, so it now has a balance of 873,800 in the beach renourishment account. And the American Rescue money did come in, 
we got the million one twenty six three seventy one ninety six, which will be going into the capital projects fund in the month of October. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Sure. Let me find my agenda. All right. The next thing on the agenda is the Public Works Quarterly Report with John Adair. Good evening. Good evening, Council, Mayor, and citizens. There's a lot going on right now, as you know. Uh, the report for the month of September and other items I will give you uh, under our sanitation division. Uh, 30 Moby cards were delivered due to overflow. The uh, uh, three-time-a-week rollout program uh, ended uh, September 10th after a successful summer. Not quite as busy as last year, or, but still strong. Uh, on the commercial service, 37 extra pickups were required due to overflow. Our semi-annual hazardous household waste, uh, e-waste drop-off event was held September 16th to 18th for <coughs> public works. 175 vehicles were checked in over the three days uh, with public works staff and an accumulated total of over 2.8 tons of household hazardous waste and 3.4 tons of electronics were safely delivered to authorized recyclers. Since starting this program in 2010, we have diverted over 57 tons of household hazardous waste and 73 tons of electronics from the waste stream and the landfill. In September, we collected 486 tons of solid waste, 57 tons of mixed debris, 79 tons of yard debris, and 49 tons of recyclable. Uh, speaking of uh, debris, uh, we recently recovered, we are still in the process of recovering from Hurricane Ian. Uh, Significant uh, is we picked up and removed 417 tons of debris from town streets and the beach, uh, all delivered to the uh, landfill. We are working with FEMA to get a <coughs> declaration for categories A, debris removal, and G, which is permanent work, items on the beach, walkovers, and things like that. And it's looking likely that they're going to authorize that de declaration. So I'm in the middle of that. I had a meeting last week with all the other municipalities, uh, joint uh, uh, damage assessment meeting, and then tomorrow I have an applicant briefing. And I'm being told it looks like uh, this, the county's meeting their threshold for reimbursement on everything that we spend. Normally, the federal government picks up 75%, and the state sometimes picks up the other 25%, most of the time. So we should be getting a lot of that uh, expenditures back. Uh, Horry County has made a formal request to the Army Corps of Engineers for uh, beach renourishment, uh, as it's so needed. The Horry County uh, has taken beach elevation profiles uh, and the comparison from their, uh, I believe, March survey to what they took a few days after the hurricane, uh, approximately 77,000 cubic yards of sand were lost from Surfside Beach. Uh, and so that process is underway between the Army Corps and the county. They're the lead on any beach renourishment that gets done. We are a sub-recipient. Uh, streets and Drainage Division. Uh, Crews continue to inspect and maintain drainage ways throughout the town, uh, making improvements where we can. Beach, beach refuse and recycling services are down to three days a week now from a fall schedule. Uh, we have our, uh, as Diana mentioned, our uh, phase two north side drainage project is uh, under design. It's almost ready to bid, but we're going to hold off a little while longer. We received, I applied and received half a million dollar grant from the county uh, ARPA money, the uh, rescue plan money. Uh, so that's been approved already. And I've applied for an additional $750,000 from the state uh, Office of Resiliency of their offer money. And those th that money will be used to a drainage project to offset our costs on the drainage project since it qualifies as that stormwater program. Um, along with the normal road paving, the, the pier parking lot is under design and permitting right now. Uh, I went to CTC, the County Transportation Committee, back in August, and I received partial uh, approval, and I received the second half of my approval this month's meeting last week. Uh, so I'll be getting my uh, about $650,000 from them, and about 300 of that will go towards the pier parking lot. Uh, so that won't come out of the pier fund, and that's been approved. Uh, under our grounds division, uh, repairs and maintenance are being performed at the public restrooms. 
Uh, the new restroom at Old Children's Park is almost ready for use by the public. We have to have a handrail put in, and uh, Sandy Cooper has to run a power line over there, but it should be open in the next week or two. Um, complete maintenance division. In September, our mechanics completed 78 repairs on town vehicles and equipment, as well as uh, eight vehicles received preventive maintenance. Uh, on uh, October 18th, bids were publicly opened for the town hall and municipal court demolition project across the parking lot. Uh, the low bid was $57,500. Bids are being examined for adherence to specifications, and the award will be made in the coming week. I want to keep council abreast of what's going on with that. We received four bids, lowest of which was 57. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Mr. Mayor, John, as we, we all know that the dunes were washed out a lot of places, and a lot of areas up and down the beach are restoring those. Are you going to be restoring the ones here, or what's the plan? Well, public works crews are creating a small berm across the entire old sand fence line, just as a small measure, maybe a four to six foot little berm down the beach. Uh, some DHEC OCRM has authorized private property owners to do their own scraping and piling if they wish to at their own expense up until October 31st. With an emergency blanket order allowing that, as well as uh, putting sand back on the beach that went up on their property. And so they have that authorization for the rest of the month. So uh, if, if a condo complex hired somebody to pile sand up, that's not what the town's doing. That's private. We lost all our dunes to the northeast. And that's what we wait for to get it piled up. This time. We don't want to spend millions of dollars of our own money to pile up when the federal government's going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So we just, we're just we trying to make a little protective berm along the beach like we did after uh, the 2017 storm or Irma, and, uh, and they'll be not far behind us. Okay. You know, I, I would imagine they'll, if they do an emergency procurement, uh, they'll have somebody mobilized by you know, spring summer. But they did the same way they did it last time. And when they do our announcements in the spring and summer, if you remember. Yeah. But you're thinking, you're talking about the whole beach, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Not just the bins. <laughs> Additionally, uh, I should note while we're all in the room, uh, Bill had asked me to get those signs up, those uh, 
pay parking signs on Seaside Drive nor that same segment of road, and those will be installed over the next couple of days. We've got the uh, signs and the poles, and we have the, uh, the letters have been submitted, sent out to all the homeowners to expect it. So that's happening this week. Have, have, has everybody taken the signs down that we asked them to take down? No. Yeah. You can't make them because it's on the fences and it's out of the right of way. Yeah, we got a legal opinion on whether we could take them off, and that was not a violation. Okay. So sure. But the public signs take precedence over any public signs. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. You do good work. Appreciate that. Thank you. The next thing on the agenda is the resolution 22-152 for workplace safety. And that is to promote workplace safety. Whereas the mayor and town council recognize the prevention of accidents and promotion of workplace safety affect employees, property, and the public, and that promoting workplace safety will enhance the operating efficiency in the town of town government. And whereas a proactive <coughs> safety emphasis posture requires that safety training be provided to employees and that, and that sound procedures are in place to protect employees and equipment is a primary consideration and takes precedence over expediency in all operations. Now, therefore, and be it resolved that the town of Surfside Beach will endeavor to prove, provide a safe work environment and is free from recognized hazards through the establishment of implementation of safety policies and procedures with subsequent amendments and additions designed to provide protection to town employees, its citizens, the public and private property, and the general public. Now, therefore, it be further resolved that the town of Surfside Beach will support compliance with all federal and state safety regulations provide and require the use of personal protective equipment by all employees and ensure that all employees are advised of and understand their safety responsibilities in the performance of their work. Be it so resolved, signed, sealed, and dated this 25th day of October, 2022, Surfside Beach Council. Mr. Frank. Yes. We vote on this. Oh, and the next thing is uh, discussion yeah, where motions may be made by council and it's in reference to communication strategy yes, uh, with Bill Shanahan. The yeah. purpose of this is to come up with a way to make sure that the whole council receives the same information and everyone's a part of giving directions to the administrators. Uh, the council as a whole has let me know or has stated that they want each of us to receive the same information in reference to issues that affect the town. The council as a whole have stated that they want to be a part of given directions that affect the town. The council as a whole have stated that no one council member should be providing information given directions without them having knowledge of and approving such an action. Uh, the administrator has in the past received emails and text given direction and or provide information that only copy the portion of the council. So the recommendation is that we do, do like a lot of other places do is the mayor be identified as the uh, POC for the administrator and reference to all direction and information going to him. Uh, that way we make sure everybody is aware of what's going on. All direction or Directly to the administrator should be known and approved by the whole council before being given. Any uh, meeting with the administrator should be made by appointment with the understanding, and I say this because this is not an issue. I have a, a do not disturb sign on my door, and when that door is closed, I've already talked to the clerk, and people don't bother me unless it's a life and death emergency. So that doesn't happen. And reference you as a council coming into my office and spending lots of time there, that doesn't happen. You know, I'll get someone in, come in for 20 minutes, uh, but most of you all, if I see you once in a two week period, that's about average. So, and then some folks I see at breakfast once a month. 
or, or so. So that's not a big problem, but I think that we've, we've got it set up that way. It just makes it easier. And, and, and then the administrator should have the right to request uh, two council members be the president for some of the stuff we hang around by the base. So that's what I have. Anybody have any questions of the town administrator on this? Any discussion? Well, Katrina, when I sat down on her exit interview, and she basically said, "Part of your problem is we have you have eight bosses." I have what? Eight bosses. And, and like seven of us and Cherry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I, so I I've I've heard this before. Um. I'm, I've been trying to go through the mayor for anything that I, yes, sir. most stuff, but there are some things that I'll go direct to you. Just like give you an example. Uh, you signed a contract with Pivot, and I'd like to get, get their name and phone number. I don't need to go, I don't think I should go through the mayor just to get that information. So I have a little bit of a problem that everything goes through the mayor. Um, I mean, I'm willing to try. I'm willing to do it, but I just I do have a problem with using well, him as a door. Yes, sir. and just in, in reference to what you said about having eight bosses, uh, uh, I like to think I have seven, but I understand. <laughs> but but um, I mean, think about it. Each and every one of you right here. How many of y'all in the last month have spent more come to my office more than twice? It's just the truth. I mean, yeah. It's just you said he got run. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I have a comment on this too. <laughs> I, I see no problem with all this stuff except going through the mayor for everything that we need. I, we are a council with the mayor. We are not a strong mayor. This is all council. <clears throat> so if we have a problem, I don't see it as the point of going to the mayor and grieving our problems with the mayor before it gets to you. The mayor might decide it, it ain't good enough to get to you, where I might think it is. So I do have a problem with that part of it. I don't have a problem with setting up meetings, having two people in, in the room when you have a discussion with somebody. I don't have any problems with that. But I do have a problem of me reporting to the mayor instead of reporting to you for something that I need. Well, we could also take a look at it if, if y'all are giving out directions or requests or something like that, that I have the authority to make sure everybody knows about it. Yes, sir. Oh, That's the important thing to me, that nobody is blindsided, nobody misses out on, on something, and, and nobody gets mad when we make sure everybody knows about it. Now, is there anybody here on council that has ever asked me for something or ever, you know, wanted to do something that I haven't promoted or put it on the agenda or whatever that I stopped you from doing that? I mean, I, every time I get information, I try to share it with everybody. And, and I'm, not, I'm not opinionated on making the decision, but I, you know, I have faithfully let everybody know what the issues are. But that's, that's fine with me. However y'all want to do it, it's fine with me. You gonna make a motion on it? Or are you gonna accept the administrator? Mm -hmm. okay. Whatever the motion is. No, I don't think it's just for the administrator to decide how he wants to work. I mean, if you want to write this up, I'd say we're go buy it. Yeah, I'm gonna follow this. Follow this? Yes, okay. Sir. You'll follow this and follow it. Yeah, you answer. Okay. 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 We can always try it, and if it doesn't work, then we can come back to the town administrator and ask them to do it differently. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Next thing on the agenda is the second reading of Ordinance 22-0951, Chapter 13, an ordinance for the town of Sir Sun Beach to amend Chapter 13. Buildings and building regulations of the town's code of ordinances, specifically section 13 21 
next option of building codes. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to accept for the second reading ordinance 22-0951. Second. Good evening, Mayor. Well, thank you. Uh, this is like we explained last uh, council meeting. This is really just a housekeeping. Um, we wanted to clean, clarify the ordinance and make sure that the ordinance is more user friendly while meeting the full intent of the state law. Uh, we have adopted the International Building Codes. South Carolina has adopted their own sections of those codes. This is just to clarify that along with Chapter 1. Uh, there are no additional codes that have been added through this ordinance. Anybody have any questions? Are we ready to vote then? Mr. Stamey? Yes. Holder? Yes. Keating? Yes. Cracklaw? Yes. Kinkin? Yes. Drake? Yes. And I'm yes too. So thank, thank you. you very much. The next thing on the agenda is the motion for peer committees. Facebook page. Yes, so that information was provided to the council at the last council meeting. And uh, not based on my knowledge, none of it has changed, but based on the information that we see in the last uh, council meeting, staff would recommend that you approve this. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I'll make a motion that we accept the peer committee's Facebook page recommendation. I second. Are there any questions before we do that? We, we discussed this last week. We just couldn't take a motion on it. All right, Mr. Stanley. One question, Mr. Mayor, before we go. Ahead. Is this for both motions? That, I mean, both things that was on the agenda last week to be discussed? The, no. the, well, the next, the next no. one is going to be rules. Um, the next thing on the agenda is, is the uh, rules for the group. So we are voting on both things from last week. We're just doing one individual. individual okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Holder? Yes. Keating? Yes. Cracklaw? Yes. Kinkin? Yes. Drake? Yes. And I'm yes too. So that passed. Mm -hmm. Now we'll go to the motion for the rules for the group. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Again, that was the rules that were presented last week, and um, nothing on that has changed. And based on the information that was provided at the last council meeting, uh, staff recommend that we go by it. We approve it. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I make a motion that we approve the rules for the peer as presented last week. Sergeant. Any questions before we vote on it? Mr. Stanley? Yes. Holder? Yes. Keating? Yes. Cracklaw? Yes. Jenkin? Yes. Drake? Yes. And myself is yes. <clears throat> oh, that's 40 unanimous votes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next thing on the agenda is the government complex, and that uh, is being introduced by uh, Council Member Kinkin. Um, over a year ago, the last council decided that we needed to abandon the old town hall and court council chamber due to mold and structural issues. Actually, it's been just about a year ago, we moved the town administration into the uh, building across the street and move council court in the uh, civic center. A few months ago, this council requested the town administrator to issue an RFQ for a uh, municipal architect firm to help plan our future needs for, uh, for our buildings. He identified Creech and Associate as the most qualified of the respondents. They, uh, they attended a workshop and to explain what they could do for us, what they've done in the past in the Low Country, and what they had to offer for the needs of this town. It was a very good presentation. Our needs and wants are part of our 10 year plan. Creech and Associates will work with our stakeholders plus the residents to develop a master plan for our current and future needs. We know we need a larger police department. Um, since we closed the annex, plus space for future expansion in the police department, fire department, and space for an EOC. 
We also need to replace the courtroom space and the town uh, council space. Uh, after, after they make their study of our needs and wants, they will present a long-term plan on how best to organize our buildings requirements to best serve our town. This study and plan will take several months to complete. There and for in keeping with our 10 year plan, I make a motion to instruct the town administrator to uh, negotiate a contract with Preach and Associate, develop a master plan for our government building needs. The plan should include our immediate needs for expanded police station, council chamber, and court space, plus any future needs. This is an attempt to keep moving forward and solve our current and future needs. I second. Okay, I have a first and second in the discussion. Mr. Payne, do you have anything to say? Yes, sir. Uh, we, we, we beat this to death. Most of y'all know in our unit, but most we, we beat this to death. So, along with that, I think we ought to go ahead and get, a, get a, some kind of plan up and running and, and, and decide what we need and where we need it at. I do think that this company that came in and tried to give us a rundown on it would be a good association to have with the family. So, yeah, I think that's what we need to do is move on instead of kicking, kicking the horse. Okay, Mr. Horner? Yes, I agree. Do we need to make decisions that we start to work? I know that uh, no decisions will be made to until we complete the pier because that's got to be done first. But uh, we've got to start work so we can get a new can, uh, town hall for us <coughs> and we need food sometime in the near future. Okay. Yeah, I think we, we left it the last time was that we needed to define what our requirements are and, and what we needed to have done and, and what is the scope of work that, that we're, we're asking of them so that they can provide a proposal. Um, you know, we've already had significant discussions with them, but we've never told them what direction the town wants to take and what the scope of work is going to be. You know, well over a year ago, we decided we were going to build about a 2,000 square foot meeting space, multi-purpose building next to the, the new town hall. That had not happened. In January, we got together and said, you know, since there are certain people that were interested in bringing um, council chambers back on this side of 17, that we would do that same proposal, that same building, and have it an option to build on this side of 17 or over by the new town hall. That also has not happened. But now all of a sudden we're talking about new government complexes, uh, expanding the police department, adding uh, another emergency operations center that we've never had before, <clears throat> and you know, creating this grandiose plan for some strange reason. So I just think that that is terribly wasteful spending right now. We've got the pier to complete. Uh, we just got caught up on some of the scheduler delays that the pier has um, experienced over the last year and a half or so. And that has cost us an additional $783,000. That does not include what may be coming up and what the impacts of the stop work orders may be. So, you know, as Mr. Holder said, you know, we can table this until January. Um, I mean, it's already been over a year. What's another six months? Um, because I just don't think we have a plan as to what it is the town wants to see for a new council chambers. You know, we had budgeted and approved between five and seven hundred thousand dollars out of last year's budget to build that uh, facility over next to the new town hall. We bought the extra property to do just that, and that hasn't happened. And you know, now all of a sudden we're we're looking at, you know, the presentation that was given us all the examples, the cheapest example that was given 
to us of their capabilities was five million dollars. The most expensive was twelve and a half million dollars for a new municipal complex. And I just I just think it's a ridiculous waste of money at this time. Okay. I I guess I'd like to know when we will find out what this will cost us. I mean, if we authorize this tonight, are we authorizing basically a blank check? Or when do we find out <laughs> how much it will cost us? Can I answer that? Sure. I mean, no, I guess. no go ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. In fact, it's it's funny you would ask because I, I can you hear me? I'm not hearing myself, my head. I'm sorry. Um, but um, I actually spoke to three ten associates today. You know, and all, whether we're going to give you a price on, on a building head compared to a building on the other side, or whether we're going to build a, 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 or design a, a government complex. I need someone on board to make them put together what it, whichever one it is so we can come up with a cost. Uh, I mean, I can tell you, you know, a year and a half ago, I think it was $65 a square foot just for the building, but it didn't talk about the things inside. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, what Creech and Associates are doing is when they talked about the different complexes they did, they were just examples because they wanted you to know that they could do the job. Uh, what they would do, and I, I have a rough a, a rough uh, guesstimate on the process that they would use, is, uh, and this would be basically the same process, whether you're doing an individual building or you're building a, a master plan for a government complex. And what you gotta remember with that, if you did decide to do the master plan, you know, you don't have to do it once it's done, you, you do it as you can afford it or as you see the need for it. Uh, but the first thing that they so they would they need to know which one they were doing and they would do that by sitting down with the council and, and getting that figuring that out. Uh, it, the process itself is eight steps. Step one would be project start up, kick off meeting with the advisory committee. That'd be a committee that you all put together uh, to help them identify the data to figure out where they need to go or where they need to be in the next 10 years. The second thing is that they do a profile departments and conduct staff interviews because they've got to know what your processes are, who needs to be together, who, who doesn't need to be together, you know, what, what is your workflow because that's how they got to set these things up. Um, future uh, forecast future personnel and we're expecting to grow over the next 10 years. You want to make sure that um, that the buildings, building or buildings, whichever way you go, matches that because how many times, and I know there's a lot of people here that's probably seen it, you move into the building, you've already outgrown it, uh, and it's already too small or it's got no roof expansion. And then you have to program the task force program, and that's taking all that information and put it together. Then they have master planning. Once they put that stuff together, they start putting together different alternatives that they would bring to the council and the council would say this is the one that we like and, and uh, or these are the ones we like you know whichever way it was and then from there they would come up with probable cost estimates on this is what it takes to do this and, and from there they'd come up with a development of deliveries this is when it's done what is this plan going to walk look like you know that, that some of the things they do, which is pretty cool, is you know you can actually put on glasses and walk through the buildings because they'll have the building built on a computer, and and, uh, and then they would prepare and present a final re uh, report, uh, total on some. Uh, uh, they they don't know what's going to cost it or what what you need, but in saying that they will, they have sent a list of the costs, you know, and they're pretty. Close to what everybody else does. Uh, principal is 225 an hour, senior associate 190, associate project manager 180, uh, project architect 170, construction administration would be 160, uh, designer 155, interior designer 140, CAD technical would be 135, and administrative would be uh, 75. Probably based on my limited knowledge of numbers, that'd be the one that I would find. I'm going to get my 55 on that because uh, it's just the way it is. So that's what they would do. That's how it would work. But there would be, you know, 
before we started, if we would have a guesstimate of what it costs based on those numbers, based on the hours. Uh, and so that's where we're at with it. If you have it, you know. I, I'd like to say one more thing too is uh, we're working on our comprehensive plan. So I think we should also look at this, uh, look to the future. Um, it has to be done at some point. I somewhat agree that until the peer gets done, I don't really want to spend money, but it has to get spent at some point. So it's like anything else, spend it and <laughs> so we have enough to cover the rest. <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, just uh, if you don't mind, a reference to the end of our wrong, we've been to the comprehensive plan. Facilities is a part of the comprehensive plan. And basically what it says at the end of 10 years, this is what we want to have in facilities. With the understanding that can change every year because of the demographic change, some of that stuff changes. And we do the rewrite uh, in five years. Uh, but it doesn't say, it, it, it will say you need to have a, a we'll say government conference. It doesn't say what it looks like. It doesn't say, how you build it, how you design it, that's what you have to do. That's, that's the main, but it will address whether or not they do the new one yes or no. Is that pretty close? <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote this to be as generic as possible. Uh, I do feel like we need a police station expansion. There's other things that uh, the fire department wanted to put in the, the police station. Um, you come down to what your needs and your wants are. Some of that may be wants, some of it may be needs. I, we do need an expansion in the police department. We do need to replace our uh, town hall courtroom. And what that looks like, that's what their job is. To find out what our needs are and our wants and come up with a comprehensive plan, knowing that we're not gonna do it all at one time. Uh, you know. It, we may not have money to do anything but the police department, and we continue to work out of this building. But if we don't have a plan, we won't get anywhere. And we kicked this down the road for a year, and we're right where we were a year ago, <clears throat> except we moved town hall across the road. So to me, it doesn't make any sense to drag our feet any longer. Let's get a plan. Um, I know the way some of this works, the cost that they will have to develop the plan. You can front load in the first building that you put in. It'll be, that cost will go into that building or buildings. And, uh, you know, it's it's there. Um, I do feel like we're gonna, we're gonna have money um, after the pier is done, but this isn't gonna happen by Christmas. It's not gonna happen by Easter. We'll be lucky by the end of this year or end of this cal, uh, not a calendar year, uh, it's a financial year, if we know where we are. <clears throat> uh, if they do what I think they'll do, it'll take several months to do, and then they'll have to come up. With, uh, so I think now's the time to get started. We have a 10-year plan that we have to work on. Let's get started on that. And this is all part of the 10-year plan. Uh, council chamber may not happen for 15 years, but we have to have a a plan and and I've left it as generic as I possibly could. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm I'm with the council members on the peer part. I think we need to finish that and get that done. But I can see that we need to put some type of plan together. But um, between the two locations, are they given a generic plan of what they're planning to do based on? They were here last time. It looked like everything was over here. Sharing it, and that's why I'm concerned with that. We purchased the property over there, we got the additional land over there. This land on this side is more valuable if we decide to do something with it. And if we decide to do the chamber with it, that's fine. The police department, that's fine. But I think the police department has always got the upper hand over the fire department for many years here. The fire department is way behind for Mr. Clemens, Chief Clemens. And I'm glad to see that he's here and he's putting the fire department and looking at equipment, looking at stuff we need, stuff we don't need, um, just making good choices. I would say with the police department, I think we need to maybe get an evaluation of the police department. Other than just the people that work in there, it says 
How many people do we have in 1.9 miles town? How many crimes? How many cars? How many square foot buildings do we need? And that hasn't been done. So we're planning to build a building based on this I won't, I won't, and then not looking at the an outside professional team coming and looking at the actual square footage of what we already have in the police department. So I kind of I see that we need it, but I see that we need a lot of other things before we get to that. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and and that decision of whether they're going to do one building or a complex, that's completely up to the council. They, when they put the presentation together, like everybody else that gave us a presentation, they wanted us to see what they had done the best. They wanted us to know that anything we desired, they had the ability to do it. Whether it's one building, whether it's multiple buildings. So that, that's what that is about. And these guys would come in there and they would look, they have experts. Um, they would look at the police department to see if you know, maybe you knock out a few walls and do a couple of offices and it's everything you need. Uh, maybe you have a, one of the issues we found during this hurricane is that our EOC uh, did not meet the needs that we needed it to do. And, and, and that's, you know, that was a hurricane, but you know, that's going to be the same for any major uh, catastrophe. So, you know, we, we can identify those, those areas, but when they, when they come in and they look at it, and, and I'll use Rob because he's sitting over there, and Rob tells them I need A, B, and C, and and this is why. Well, well you know what? They, they will look at it because they will have experts, people that build fire stations, people that build police stations, and they're going to say, well, you know what? You, you probably need A and B. C can be pushed into A and B, and you really don't need it. We can do it without doing that. And that's the type of stuff that they do. And because, you know, you know the fire chief, he, he knows what the fire department needs, but he's not an architect. Uh, and so they will help him with that. And, and and then the bottom line is, whatever they come up with a plan, no <coughs> nothing gets approved unless you guys are okay. Yeah, I've got one more question for you, Mr. Uh, Mr. This building is in pretty bad shape, from what my understanding is. It has mold in it. It yes. has some, So instead of keep putting this off, and as one of the council members said, we could use this for another four years or five years, that's very possible. But what is it that, that helps wise to just the, the council here and the people that's showing up with this mold in this building? So what I'm trying to get at is. Do we not need to go ahead and get this? I mean, it ain't an emergency, but do we not need to go ahead and get this plan up and running to where we all have something to, to take care of these problems? I think having the plan is a very smart thing to do for those issues. And, and two reasons on that it is, well, one reason is if they, if we stand forward with them, it's going to take 30 days, approximately, I'm off that, jump in. About 30 days to get everything set up so we know exactly what they're going to do and we know exactly what it's going to cost and what the end results are going to be. And, and then the project itself, be it one building or be it six buildings, can take anywhere from four, four months to um, a year to, to, to put it together. So at the end of that, you know, my expectation would be that the repair will be completed, uh, it'll be making money. And then we will be able to decide on our next steps based on what we know about the pier because it's completed then and what we've got coming out in and which way we're going. And having it, having it ready to move forward, in my opinion, doesn't hurt anything. Unless, of course, Diana tells me we can't afford whatever number they come up with. If she says that, I don't want to do it. Okay, uh, we had Creeks and Associates here. Bill Shanahan put out a uh, request for qualifications to find a company that would be able to handle our needs as far as design and, and everything. And uh, they came in, gave us a presentation. It did not go well. And it was sort of embarrassing, and they, they left. So the bottom line is, you know, we can't, we can't get anybody to design without hiring somebody. 
Nobody's going to come in and tell you, you know, you can do this, you can do that for free. Everybody's going to have to do it. So basically, it's it's my understanding that you know we're in our comprehensive plan. So within the next year, we have to decide where we want to be in the next ten years, and we need a company like this to to come in and basically guide us through. Now, they're going to come in and give us the recommendations on what they believe. But it's council's going to be the decision on whether it goes here or whether it goes there. They're going to make the recommendations, and that's what we're going to have that <coughs> discussion. But we can't have that discussion unless we get the, the Creeks and Associates on board to do that. So uh, that's where I stand on it. And, I, you know, I know that everybody has put into this, but I've, you know, my whole thing is, and we've talked about this before, and, and we had this a couple meetings ago, the American Rescue Fund and stuff that they put out. We've said that we're not doing anything until January. Okay, to even look at that money, it's not going anywhere. We're keeping it in the pot right here just in case. And, uh, you know, by the end, by the architect, when they get it, by the end of when they get done, we'll know where we stand on the pier because the pier will be done by then. And, and then we can make the decision on whether we're going to move forward and build the building so we have the money here too. But, you know, the bottom line is we need to design the buildings and figure out what we want first if we're going to move forward on this. So that's all I have to say. So with that, we have the motion. Okay, I'll make the motion. Okay. Hold for second. All second. So, Mr. Staney? Yes. Holder? Yes. Keating? No. Reckon? Yes. Kinkin? Yes. Drake? Yes. And I'm yes too. So, with that, that will direct you to get in touch with Creek and Associates. And yes, sir. Work it out. But, you know, we are going to have a discussion with them in the beginning of, on what our wants and what our needs are and stuff like that before yes, sir. we proceed either way. Yes. The first thing that will happen is we'll talk to you about. The next thing on the agenda is employee handbook by Mr. Shanahan. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> council to include uh, a bit of a revised employee handbook. Fax, uh, this was a joint effort between all of the department heads, the administrator, and the municipal association. And of course, we did send stuff out to the council to review and comment, which we got and, and addressed them. Uh, a lot of the revisions were made to correct grammar, streamline processes, and make it easier to understand, understand by the employees. Uh, the major change in the, the handbook was the grievance procedure. And um, yeah, we updated it just a little bit from when we sent it to you. There will be uh, the, the idea of the grievance procedure. If you're going through, uh, if you have a grievance to file, we will have a, a group of department heads that we can use to, to see the grievance. And then when you finish going through, and, and there's rules with that, you can't be related to anybody, you can't know anybody, you don't go drinking with them, but it's, you know, it, you, it, you have to be completely objective. Uh, and um, once they run it through the grievance procedure, if they come up with a recommendation, that recommendation uh, will go through what will, will be made if they don't, if they want to appeal it, then you come up to the administrator base and they can talk about why they think the uh, grievance committee was wrong. And then after that, we'll go we'll down if, uh, if the, um, they want to take it to it or go that way, of course, they always have that option. Uh, so that's where we're at with that. Uh, if this is basically because we sent it to you all and we just had a lot of stuff going on. We should have really had it up a couple of weeks earlier. Um, but we would like to bring it back at the next council meeting with the resolution so we can move forward with this. Okay. okay. Um, so, did you want a motion on that to accept the handbook? Or? Yes, and then we'll come up with a resolution. 
Okay. The next half of it, if you can offer it. Unless you want me to read it, you want me to put together. Uh, I don't think we can do that, but right? Well, let's just do it. He can do a motion. You can do a motion to approve the handbook and at the next meeting bring the resolution that would confirm your vote. Your vote. We need a motion just to ask questions, don't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, accept the employee handbook as presented to us for first reading. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion on it. Everybody have any discussion? Yeah, I got a question. When reading through it, I, I didn't quite understand. Is hol holiday pay considered time paid or time worked? Reason, let's use an example. If somebody, uh, Labor Day is a holiday, and I've worked in places where they required the employee to work Saturday. So it was time paid, but not time work. So if they were going to have 40 hour work week, they had to work Saturday to get 40 hours and they got paid the eight hours. Then I've had other places that said, okay, it's a work where it's paid time. So you come Friday, you got your 40 hours in. If you pay, work Saturday, that's time and a half. And I could not understand when I read through here, if that was which way it was. It is not time work. Yeah. I physically work 40 hours ago. You get paid for the holiday. You just get paid for the holiday. Okay. And let's see, on page 20, if an employee uh, leaves and comes back, he never picks up his original hire date. So let's say he's worked three years, he left for six months, he comes back, he works five years. He never has more than five years. That that's the way to read. Now, if, if we lay them all and they come back, they will pick up the original hire date. You know what? Um, we we changed that a little bit. Uh, actually, Council was keeping us at the same question, and we we changed. But if you leave, if, if you decide, I quit. I'm out of here. And then what we do is we pay you out your benefits and all that good stuff. So if you cut, if you, you know, two years from now you decide, you know what, that one's just a bad place. I think I'll go back and you left on good terms and you got it. Well, then, then it doesn't go back to where you first started because we paid out your benefits. Okay. And um, I believe what we did on this, uh, when we changed it, is depending on why you got, you leave. The uh, the town administrator has that discretion, with the understanding that you know, it, like you said, you get laid off. We turn around and we pay you out your benefits and all that because you were laid off and you're no longer working there. You know, you don't go back to day one unless you refund the money and you, you get it back that way. Uh, but you can't just you know, we're not just going to give you all that money at that time and then you start like you being hit by you. Getting all that. And what we're trying to do is be fair to the employees and to the town too. And guys, if I'm off the same thing, we be all work on together. But it is two different situations. Yes, sir. One, I decided to leave. I, don't, I shouldn't expect to pick it up. But if for whatever reason you lay me off, and I I work longer than I was gone. Uh, most places will pick up your original hire date. Yes, sir. We don't. Well, it's up to your discretion whether we pick it up. If we paid them a bunch of money for going, then and because we laid them off, and but they can keep their benefits, right? Yeah. Well, so they, they, they can the, go. The, I think how long how's that work? I think what you're referring to is putting somebody in inactive status. Like when we furloughed people for COVID-19, yeah. a bunch of people got furloughed for a month or two, and then they came back. They used some of the time that they had, vacation time, and then when that sweat ran out, they, they had they were still entitled to their job back, but they had the rest of that time off without pay. And then they were called back to work after the COVID emergency was settled down a little bit. So there was no break in employment. 
But they were just laid off. They were not terminated. Or they they were not. Yeah, they weren't even laid off. They were in active status on right. the book. So what 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 would happen if they had been laid off? Well, we'd have had a layoff if we were there. Okay. It's a temporary situation. Okay. The reason I ask. <laughs> I, I just want to point out on <coughs> page 43, it says vacation leave will be used for personal business, doctor, or medical appointments, illness, or vacation. So it's basically saying that you have to use vacation leave for all those. And I'm sure that's not what no, it is what that, meant. That no, I'll, meant. I, will, I will fix that. Thank you. I'll go ahead and line that out. Yeah. Sick time is what you do for medical time. Yes, sir. That's just a first reading, so we bring yeah. that fun. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're doing this. Yes, Are there any other comments? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're back, Mr. Stanley. Yes. Holder. Yes. Keating. Yes. Crackwall. Yes. Kington. Yes. Drake. Yes. And I'm yes too, so that is asked. All right, the next thing on the agenda is public comments, and this is about town services or business conducted. <laughs> Hanging, uh, 11th Avenue North. With regard to your um, communications uh, uh, strategy, that's nothing new here. It was implemented under Doug Samples because he also had a council that was uh, giving the town administrator, let's say, more than, than they could do at that point in time. And so in order to get the council to learn where their place was, it was implemented at that time. So it may not be such a bad idea. I know most of you there wouldn't abuse that. But, you know, sometimes you get a rogue every now and then. So that was a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. Veronica Collins, 713 Ocean Boulevard North. In reference to Ms. Michael Drake's uh, statement, one, excuse me, 1.96 square mile town. Oh, is, you're not, you can't call I'm out sorry, names. you can't call them out. Oh, I'm so sorry. sorry. In reference to what was said earlier about the 1.96 square mile size of this town, I just want to bring a general principle that perhaps you may want to mull over while you're going through all of the creature associates and all of this 10 year Voluminous, uh, and I hate to agree with Cindy right now, but I can't agree with you more. No, no more. Oh, I can't agree with <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I apologize for name calling using names. I did not know Just that, that was it. I did not know that we weren't supposed to use names. Okay, you can call me Veronica though, <laughs> all, you, all you want. Anyway, the big picture that I'm looking at is this 1.96 square miles. The money real estate in this town is on this side of the road, the eastern side of 17. The not so money real estate is on the western side. My experience, and perhaps yours is the same, that government buildings have never been necessarily a money maker. They're just kind of something they have to have, right? We have to have government buildings to administer it properly and to have a sane and happy town. But what a gorgeous building, thank you very much. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, across the street. Um, beautiful property, and now we've added to that property to be able to enlarge. I say all these moldy, yucky, ducky buildings that we've been complaining about, which is what started the whole thing, right? We've got moldy buildings, and it's like, oh no, we have to do something. Sell them to the highest bidder, we'll get a fortune. And with that money, you can play all you want with the preachings and the we can argue about how much we should spend or not and stuff like that. You'll have anything you would possibly want in the next 10 years. And the most important thing is I see it, the big picture wise, all of the government stuff will be together. So when a new resident or an old resident goes, where's the, 
building inspectors, where is the, you know, everybody's in one place. I remember when I got, and I complained about this earlier, when I got my permit, I was like running around all over creation to get, you know, like for an eight by 12 room, a permission to operate out of there two days a week. It was like, really? I was, I had less trouble in Philadelphia. You know, I, but anyway, the bottom line is we're small. Let's make best use of our resources. The resources are the oceanside real estate. Let's sell the whole kit and caboodle. Take all that Boku money and do whatever the heck you want. I'm done. All right, thank you. <laughs> Any other public comments? Good evening. Good evening. I'm uh, Robert Krauss, uh, Fourth Avenue North. And I would like to talk about the peer uh, stop work order. Um, I'm also on the peer committee. I think you folks know that. I don't know if everybody else does. So it's of particular interest to me. And uh, you know, it came out of the blue about two and a half weeks ago. And uh, we had a meeting the following Monday. We actually thought we might be disbanded. We weren't. We weren't sure what was going on. So. Um, been two and a half weeks, we've seen a lot of news reports, a lot of Facebook speculation, uh, talk about the whole thing being shut down and rebid and all that. And fortunately, none of that has come to pass, but I have not heard any official statements from the town. Um, I mean, it's good that we're getting back to work again and, and everything's moving and we're going to continue our business in the peer committee. But it, it just bothers me as a resident, forget the, the peer committee, that this was at best a gross miscommunication. And I wouldn't even want to speculate what it is at worst. And it just seems to me that we need to have some sort of study or investigation to figure out what happened to make sure this doesn't happen again. We don't know if we've lost time in the, in the completion of the peer. We don't know if we're going to have additional costs because of the stoppages. And I just believe it's unacceptable to just move on and, and set that behind us. So I hope that somehow you guys can authorize uh, an investigation to the bottom of it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other public comments? Well, with that, we are probably going to have an executive session this evening. So uh, now we'll do the council comments. And we'll start out with Mr. Stanley. Let me start out with saying thanks for everybody coming. I'm glad to see a lot of people here. Uh, glad to hear your comments about things that's going on in the town. Uh, there are some things that I personally think that, that the town needs to happen to make a little things better. Uh, and they, they will be at a later date, I'm sure, to answer some of the questions about what happened with Peter. I don't think nobody's hiding nothing. I think it was a, a thing that needed to be done at the time it was done because there were some misunderstandings. With that being said, uh, tomorrow is a workshop for the town, citizens workshop. And it's from six to eight o'clock. And the people that came out and spoke tonight might want to be there again tomorrow night. Maybe you can find out a little bit more information. So I would appreciate it for every one of you, the ones that's listening, the ones that's here, come out and, and see what's going on in your town. Because sitting on that side of the room is a whole lot different than sitting on this side of the room. Because there are a lot of things that we see that y'all don't see. And I, and it's hard to explain to you sometimes, but one thing I'll tell you, if you come and ask me or send me a text, I'll answer the best I can, and I'll be truthful as I can be about it. And with that being said, good night, everybody. Mr. Holder. Well, thank everybody for coming out tonight, either in person or online. Uh, first thing, I just want to, you know, I received <coughs> 7,500 emails stating we're going to have to need to protect our geese, our birds here in town. And I didn't know, it's uh, surprising to see that, that many emails come. And I don't believe that 
I haven't seen anybody run over the birds on purpose or trying to hurt like this. And it's not something I see. And I, I hate it. That word has got out and being said at all in our town. And it shouldn't be. Uh, so um, I want everybody to know this weekend is the car show and also the Chewy Book Off here in town Saturday. Meatball. Meatball, yes, meatball. And uh, next weekend, the weekend after that, is for the fall festival. So we've got two major events the next two weeks. So, y'all have a good night. Okay. And likewise, I want to thank everybody for coming out and those for tuning in and taking an interest in our town. Um, some things are not easy. Some things go through with a breeze, so you never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, of course, I'm used to say. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we're, 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 we're slowly coming to a conclusion on what we need and what we can and cannot do with the pier, how to move that forward, how to get it to completion. Um, we had a little hiccup that, you know, will probably cost us dearly before it's over, but um, hopefully it's something we can recover from and, and proceed forward without uh, too much ongoing drama with that. So, as Mr. Holder mentioned, you know, we've got a lot of the fall festival events coming up. So, you know, by all means, come out and, and be part of the community and meet your neighbors uh, and enjoy the beautiful fall weather we have. <coughs> as we proceed into the Thanksgiving and uh, holiday season. So with that, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Basically, I'll echo what the other three councilmen have said before me. Um, thanks for tuning in and taking an interest and showing up. Uh, and also, don't forget, uh, the town administrators meeting tomorrow. It's usually pretty informative. Uh, hardly anyone shows up. Hopefully that changes tomorrow. Uh, I, I am the council liaison for the APEX committee. And if you, it's one person down right now, as far as I know. Uh, so if anybody would like to be on that committee, please apply. It only has one meeting a year. We might have two this time. I, I think we need two just so people know what they need to do at the main meeting. But with that being said, uh, thank you. Uh, see you next time. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, uh, I'm real happy that we decided to move forward and, and uh, get an architect firm to give us some ideas what what's best to do long term. I, I don't understand how uh, Paul only had 8,000. I've had over 40 some thousand uh, emails. Uh, I think because I responded to one, I created a whole <laughs> monster. But anyway, it, uh, they're, they're form letters, uh, easy to do. Um, do encourage you to come tomorrow night. Um, Bill puts a lot of work into this. He has the information. Uh, come here, uh, ask questions. It's it's not like a council meeting. It's not as that that formal. Uh, I certainly encourage you to come. Uh, come to our uh, two weekends. Rob has promised beautiful weather. Uh, I make him responsible for all the weather. <laughs> anyway, y'all, thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, tuning in and listening in. Y'all have a great night, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Actually, we'll see you hopefully tomorrow night and certainly this weekend. Right, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and coming out tonight. And uh, the uh, festivals are coming up. Everybody, please come out to the festivals. And again, Rob, it's your fault. It's not sunshine, so you know that. <laughs> but uh, the uh, weather, I think, will turn out good for it. And tomorrow night is a good time for everybody to come out and be part of the town and please express your.
concerns to the administrator and stuff like that for you for things that you want to. And again, thank you everybody for coming out. Good night. <coughs> You know, one of the big things that we have to do is plan for our future. And, you know, tonight we talked about the architectural designs and what we're going to do with the building, but we also need to know what the town as a whole is going to do and what we're going to do. So this meeting tomorrow, that workshop is for the residents to get involved in it and give your opinion on what you want. So that we can take that into consideration when we try to move forward. So I urge anybody that wants to come. And as far as uh, the pier and, and things went, you know, it was an unfortunate set of circumstances. And, and we, moved, we moved through it the best we can. Okay, and we got it all done. And the bottom line is our pier is 75% done and we've got 25% to go. And, you know, I was told earlier this week that, you know, with all this that happened, the stop work orders and everything else, that we're still on plan, we're still on the course to finish this in March. So let's just go and get it done. And, you know, we're, we're trying not to create a bunch of drama about it. But uh, internally, we'll be looking at it. We'll be thinking about what we need to do and we'll be moving on from it. Make sure that you're there to, to the meatball challenge this weekend because it, I hear that it's going to be good. I talked to Dagworths today and they're coming down and going to be down there with their meatballs. So, and you got the car show, and then of course we've got the Halloween parade that's going, going after that. And that's it's unusual because this year it's starting at Town Hall, and from Town Hall it'll go down Surfside Drive down to uh, Ocean Boulevard. So, don't line up at the end of Melody Lane or 16th because nobody will be there. So it's in the it's in the this parking lot where everybody's going to line up on Saturday. And with that, uh, I wish everybody good, good luck, and uh, we'll see you next time. And I need a motion for executive session. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we go into executive session. Oh, I can't read all this. Pursuant to the Freedom of uh, Information Act 30 4 70 A, discussion of employment. Okay, 30 4 70 A, 2, the discussion of negotiations and proposed contractual arrangements. Here, please. Do I have a second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. We will go into executive session.